to you all to our service of Holy Communion for the Sunday before Advent from the Chet Valley Churches. Today is also known as Christ the King Sunday and it gives us a chance to reflect upon the Kingship of Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And our first hymn is, O Worship the King. it's time to say sorry to God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close to hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. The kingdom is yours, but we turn away from your just rule. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power and strength. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The glory is yours, but we fall short of the glory of God. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And as forgiven people, we will now say together the Gloria. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray now the prayer for today. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. Amen. And our next hymn is From Heaven You Came. From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our world. to be served but to serve and give your To bring our life as a 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, he saved others. Let himself save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So what sort of a king was and is Jesus? And what does it mean to be his subjects? Is he an absolute monarch who believes in the divine right of kings, that he is chosen by God and that he could do as he liked? Someone who had advisers, but who didn't always listen to them, and went his own way, Think Henry VIII and Charles I and what happened to him. At the beginning of the 20th century there were kings of Germany, Russia, Greece and many other European countries whose word was law. Where are they now? Because their rule was often oppressive and their subjects were ground down, they were got rid of, sometimes very bloodily. Was Jesus like this? There are constitutional monarchs who reign but don't rule. There's a subtle difference between ruling and reigning. We have a parliament who makes our laws, which the monarch endorses. The late Queen was, and now King Charles is, a constitutional monarch. Is Jesus a king like this? At the time when Jesus was born, the Jews were waiting for a Messiah, a saviour or king in the mould of King David. They looked back on his reign as the golden age of kingship. He was the youngest son, handsome, brave and successful. He was compassionate in that he spared Saul's life more than once. But he was also deeply flawed. David sent Uriah the Hittite, a faithful soldier, into the most dangerous position in battle. David hoped that Uriah would be killed so that he could have his wife Bathsheba. Was Jesus like this? Nevertheless, 
Jesus was of David's line and, on, and was born in the same place, Bethlehem. On Palm Sunday, he was hailed as son of David. People expected him to save them. He did, but not in the way that they expected. Jesus didn't have an army. He didn't dress in fine clothes or armour. He didn't live in palaces and eat fine food. In fact, he was the most unking-like person you'd meet. But he did have authority. People recognised this. He spoke not like the scribes. He had power which he used for healing, not for his own ends. He claimed to be a servant and displayed that most tellingly at the Last Supper. He, whose hands had flung stars into space, knelt and washed his disciples' feet because they didn't think to do this for each other or for him. Luke says the charge written on the cross was King of the Jews. How can a man crucified as a common criminal be a king? What does it mean for us when we acknowledge Jesus as our king? The relationship between Jesus and his followers was not like the ordinary subject-king relationship. Jesus came as one to serve, and one of the ways he showed this was to wash his disciples' feet. He set an example for his followers, may not to do this literally for each other, but to put the comfort and well-being of others first, to see what jobs need doing and do them. James and John vied for positions to Jesus' right and left, but that is not for them or us to ask for. Jesus sought out the marginalised. He associated with all kinds of people. He expects his followers to do the same. Servants don't act as though they are greater than their masters. What sort of king is Jesus? He's one who went to the cross for his people. His crime, the King of the Jews, written above him for all to see, was meant as a term of derision. Little did those who read it know that this was the truth. This is the kind of king that Jesus is. And now I invite you to say the creed with me. We, we believe, believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sakes he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we pray our prayers of intercession. We pray for those in positions of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people. May your reign come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church, the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to people of every race and background. May your kingdom come. Lord, hear our prayer. 
we pray for Christians of every denomination that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. May your dominion come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers, that they may have the courage to endure. May your rule come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this community of faith, that attentive to your word we may always worship in spirit and in truth. May your reign come. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of the heart is greater than wealth and might. Hear as we pray for the fulfilment of your reign. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. To him be glory for ever. Amen. Amen. To crown all things, there must be love to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So share a sign of peace if you have somebody with you. And if you're on your own, then think of somebody that you would like to send peace to. And now our offertory hymn is Hail to the Lord's Anointed.
Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks because you anointed Jesus Christ, your only Son, as priest and king. Crowned with thorns, he offered his life upon the cross that he might draw all people into that kingdom where he now reigns in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. You, he offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, Lord by, by your, your cross and resurrection, resurrection you, you have, have set, set us free. free. You, you are, are the, the Saviour of, of the world. world. Father, we plead with confidence this sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, with all the who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the one body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our final hymn is King of Kings, Majesty. Christ, our exalted King, pour upon you his abundant gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.